Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper for DCS World and today we're going to take a look at using the ILS or instrument landing system to land the F-16 down here at Katasi. Now there's a couple things you need to understand first. First of all, ILS is used uh, in an, a situation of uh, poor to zero vi visibility situation such as in the night or in a storm or column A, column B. Um, the biggest thing to understand is, is where to get the information that you're looking for because there's quite a bit of it. So first, just like we saw in the previous video, you can bring up your kneeboard and then we're going to use our open and close brackets just to the left of the enter key and above and we're going to cycle through until we find Katasi, okay, because that's where we're headed. And we'll get there eventually. There we go. And what we're looking for is this guy right here, okay? This is our landing chart. Or actually, it's, well, it's a traffic chart, but what we're interested in is this right here, okay? This is our course heading for the uh, specific runways based on what direction you're, ha you're coming from. Now, it shows initial 07, and I believe the chart will actually show 08. Um, but what you're interested in is right here, the 068 degrees. That's the actual course line, including magnetic variation, which if you're curious about what magnetic variation is, Google that because that's a whole different topic. All right. So, um, but anyway, you can see the variation right here of six degrees. That means you take whatever number you would draw on the uh, airfield. So this is true, our magnetic. If we were to come over here, okay, then click on our, uh, ruler up here. Do a right click right on the edge of the runway, draw it down the length of the runway. You can see we're at 074 degrees. Okay, that's the magnetic heading. Okay, and what variation is, is basically the difference between magnetic and true heading. Okay, and again, if you guys want to get into further detail, you're going to have to look that up because it's that's a lot to it. Okay, but the short and sweet of it is what we're interested for is if we go back to our cockpit, you can see that it has six degrees of variation. So what we do is we take that 074 degrees that we saw on the ruler, subtract six, and we get 068 degrees. Okay, the other cool thing about this chart is you can also get the TACAN information you, as well as the ILS information of 109.75 and the tower frequency should you choose to input that, okay? So let's go ahead and drop the keyboard for a second or the kneeboard. And let's talk about how to set up for an ILS approach. Now, we are going to want to use our TAC, and we're also going to want to use our EHSI. So I'm going to do a left click real quick. You can see it says BRT there, and start scrolling forward. So we get a nice uh, light there. We want to make sure our mid system is on. Then we're going to come down over here, and we're going to hit our... First, you want to make sure your main menu, actually. So you just tap it, return if you're not already on this screen, the CNI screen. We're going to hit number one for TILS. Now we're going to set up both our TACAN and our ILS frequencies, but you could do it with just the ILS. But since we're here, let's go ahead and set up both. So we're going to dauber down. We're going to go to 44 X-ray was the uh, TACAN for it. Okay, and so we're already on the right band. So now we're going to dauber around again. And this is the frequency for the ILS. So we want to do 10975 and hit enter. And now here's where we enter our course, and we want 68 degrees. Okay, so that's the first step. We have our ILS set, system set up. We have our TAC end set up. Next, we're going to come down here to our EHSI. Now, by default, we are in the nav mode. We don't want to be in nav mode. We want to be in the ILS. So we're going to tap this mode button once, and you can see PLS nav. Okay, we have our nav crosshairs that come up over here, and as well as we should see them on the HUD. Now, let's talk about what the different lines mean for just a second here. You have the top line here. This is our... Um, vertical indicator okay indicating our uh, vertical deviation from the glide slope and then obviously the vertical line here is our um, horizontal deviation so the vertical line tells you steer left or right uh, horizontal line tells you go up or down now so what the situation is here is we're actually below glide slope okay when the horizontal line is above you you're below where you need to be if the horizontal horizontal line is below your flight path marker you're above where you need to be now what a lot of people will do is immediately start trying to chase these don't do that it will drive you crazy make an adjustment that's necessary for the scenario for example I'm not going to pull the nose all the way up and start gaining altitude until I hit the glide slope. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to level out the aircraft and let the uh, glide slope line come down to me. Once it comes down to me, then we'll start descending with it. Okay? So I'm going to show you guys what this all looks like here in just a second. Let me reset the camera. All right. 
There we go. All right, so the first step here is, as I unpause, we're going to make sure that we are below 300 knots, which we are. Uh, but the aircraft hasn't been rolled, so it's probably going to accelerate for a second. Let me get my controls up for you guys. For those of you who don't know, again, this is the throttle. These are rudders. Center line is the stick. Okay? All right, so let's begin here. First thing is we're going to unpause. Oops. I think I just paused it. Why am I not getting anything from my plane here? All right, so we're unpaused. So um, I had to rotate my throttle forward and back. We're starting to decelerate. I'm going to open up my speed brakes, and you can leave them out or not if you choose. I'm going to start bringing the aircraft up. Once I'm below 300 knots, gear down. And all I'm going to do is fly level flight, more or less. When the gear comes down, the flaps come down, which cause the aircraft to lift a bit. All right. Now, I don't want to start descending like crazy, so I'm going to start trimming nose up, not adding any power. We still want to trim to our 11 degrees of AOA. We're falling a bit too fast, so I'm going to start adding power. And I trimmed a little too far back, so I'm trimming a little nose forward. And by the way, in case you're new to it, 11 degrees of AOA means that the horizontal line on the flight path marker here is going to be just above the uh, AOA bracket. Okay, You should be showing us slightly fast. Okay, And then down here we'll be showing at about 11 degrees, but you can see we're at about 11 and a half degrees. So we're a little, a little too much on the AOA. All right, so now that we're approaching the correct AOA, I'm get us level, more or less. Stupid clouds are causing a problem, sorry about that. And actually, you know what I can do to stop some of that? Let's probably turn off the landing light for now. There we go. I had a feeling that's the reflection. All right, so you can see now what's happened. What's happened now is our horizontal line has now fallen below the flight path marker. So we're now above, slightly above, 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 above the glide slope. So now we just need to slowly start descending with the line, trying to keep our uh, four lines all together in the center of the flight path marker. Okay, and you can also see your course line here. We're a little bit on deviation here. We're a little bit left of the course line, which we are seeing that here as well. Just a slight uh, right deviation or left deviation. So I'm going to back up here. I'm gently coming off the throttle. I'm going to start kicking us right just a little bit. Now what I'm going to be doing is waiting for the... I'm going to keep descending until that... Um, Horizontal line starts coming back up towards us. Okay, so it's starting to come back up, so I'm adding power. And we got a little of the opposite direction now of our flight path line. And we're still looking for that two and a half degrees. I'm a little above glide slope, not bad. And the glide slope line for the ILS, I believe, is actually looking for three degrees. I'm not sure if it's actually following the two and a half degrees. We'll see here in just a second. Oh yeah, it, it is. All right, there we go. We just about got her. We're gonna land a little long, and that's the drag about the ILS, because it doesn't put you quite right on the threshold of the runway where I like to land. I like to land just inside the piano keys. Now again, I'm a little uh, slow on the uh, AOA, so I'm trimming forward just a little bit. But if you watch the throttle, I'm trying to control everything with the throttle, watching my lateral movements. As the ILS line gets above me, I'm dropping back down. I'm going to go ahead and kick my landing gear back on, or landing lights. Jesus. Actually, for this, guys, I'll leave them off. We're about 400 feet and a mile out. That's good. Adding power to get back on that glide slope. Oh, too much power. 
Now, once the runway becomes visible, we normally want to worry about it. But here we are at 150 feet. So I'm going to follow my two and a half degrees now. Now, here's what's about to happen. I'm about to cut the throttle completely back. Our speed brake's already extended, but if you don't leave your speed brake out, you need to make sure you extend it. Okay, we're going to th throttle back, speed brake's out. Then I'm going to pitch nose up until our flight path marker is right about the center of our AOA indicator. You should see the AOA light pop up, letting you know that you're at the a right AOA. We want to be at about 13 degrees AOA. You don't want to go above that as you will risk striking the... Um, uh, speed brakes or the exhaust nozzle you can damage the aircraft but we're going to hold the nose up until about a hundred knots and what we're doing is what's called aero braking we're using the fuselage and the wings underside of the wings of the aircraft to help slow us down once the front wheel comes down we're going to pitch forward just a little bit on the stick to spoil the lift on the elevators and the wings and then once we're below about 80 knots we'll pull full back on the stick bringing the elevators up which will therefore induce more drag on the aircraft we'll start applying wheel brakes below 100 knots Below 60 knots, we can re-engage nose wheel steering. At 10 knots, approximately, we can start uh, turning the aircraft um, off the runway. All right, so hopefully I don't mess this up. Here we go. All right, so I'm at zero throttle. Flaring out. There's the touchdown. Holding that nose up, holding that nose up, holding that nose up. Looking for that 100 knots. Okay, she's coming down. Tipping the stick forward. Watch on the wheel brakes, applying wheel brakes, bouncing between left and right to help keep her straight. Below 60 knots, nose wheel steering re-engaged. And there's our taxi light. All right, and that is the basics of how to do an ILS approach landing. I hope that you guys uh, learned something here. I hope it was helpful to you. If there's anything that was unclear and you need me to go over again, as usual, please don't hesitate to throw in the comments below. I have no problem creating another video if necessary, um, but I will catch you guys in the next one, and uh, keep watching, guys. This is fun so far.